Hi everyone, let's talk about Empires of the North, which I've talked about about a year ago. The the UK Games Expo last year, which sadly couldn't take place this year, uh, I played this with Rach, uh, we played it with Ignacy when it was in its uh, kind of pre-release form, and really, really enjoyed it then. You, if you don't believe me, I did a video after the UK Games Expo, I can prove that I was there first, I can prove I can be a hipster about it all. Uh, but yeah, I, I haven't played Imperial Settlers, so I can't talk about you know, comparisons between the two other than kind of what it's... Uh, explains in the rulebook are the differences between them. Uh, but just speaking about Empires of the North, I absolutely love this game. Like, we really enjoyed it the one time that we played it last year. And it's kind of been in the back of my mind, oh, we need to get back to that, we need to play that, we've missed out on that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's absolutely fantastic. It's got the you know the the tableau building of you know you've got this customized deck of cards that is fairly different from everybody else's as well. You've got basic things like fields that you're getting resources off, but you might have you know an emphasis on ships and being able to get a load of ships. That was one of the factions we played originally, or like the one I one of the ones that I played in the playthrough, the the Glen Clan is uh, kind of geared towards copying other cards, so getting cards that are effective out for you and then copying their effects and being able to use them a load of times if you can get the right amount of workers for it. I do like, you know, in a, getting a, a selection of cards and then being asked to pay for them as well is something that uh, is one of the things that I liked in uh, Terraforming Mars, that you know, you're torn between you, you're getting all of these great options and you want all of them uh, in, in some way or another, but you're going to have to decide, you know, the, the more that I take here, the, the less chance I'm going to get to use them because I'm going to get fewer workers unless of course you all you are not geared to using workers particularly. So I love the I love the card play aspect, which I understand is the most uh, similar to just Imperial Settlers anyway. But then it's got this action selection, these five actions that are only kind of relatively they're a small part of the action phase because you've got these five actions that you can take and they're in a random order each time. But you've only got two markers to select two actions, and they're kind of pa more powerful things. With it's how you harvest resources from your field cards. It's how you can construct some cards that would otherwise be unaffordable at the moment for for free instead, or get more workers. Uh, but the, the the twist that I love on that is that you can pay a food to take a second action with one of your pawns, but the action has to be either side of the action that you just chose originally and then there are powers that will let you move a marker around so then when you flip it you can get access to some of the other actions instead i think that is a a, a lovely lovely mechanism that really kind of plays with your head as well as all of these decisions and all of these options that are going around you are trying to think of okay then which not only which action do i want but which action might i want in a bit uh, and then try and work out which order I'm going to do these things in, or should I change my plans a little bit because that action is not adjacent to that one, so I won't be able to flip as easily, or am I going to be able to move the pawns around? And I think that you know, we've still got limited experience with this. I've only played uh, half the clans so far, and that's without the... I've got the Japanese uh, Islands expansion as well. It's got another two factions in and there's another two expansions aside from that, so there's, there's a ton of stuff uh, either out or coming out for this uh, but even in my limited experience so far i love the the kind of journey that this takes you on that you you start off with uh, you know just three cards in your hand and then you start the first round and gets up to four more that you start with this kind of idea of what your clan is going to be partly from the description and the particular cards that you managed to get early on because you know some that you'll some you'll want to get out as early as possible and between you know, the way that you can manipulate these actions and the way that the order that your cards come out and the ones that you decided to pick and throw away. And then on top of that, the, the islands are a beautiful thing as well that change your plans up. Between all of these things, you, your, your plans just kind of shift without you really realizing it too much. And you know, it, it's always great in games where you think that you're set on doing one thing and then suddenly it makes you go, oh, actually, this might, <laughs> maybe I'm just gonna abandon everything and uh, go gunning for this. That you think that your goal is gonna be to do this thing because that's what your faction's good at. But thanks to all of these powers and I've conquered these islands and got these uh, extra actions now, uh, thanks to all of this stuff, I'm now gonna go in this completely different direction. And 
Yeah, I, I, you have to tell me about your experiences with it if you've played it. But so far, in in every game that I've played, including that very very first one when it was just um, you know learning it for the first time, that that's always happened. That I've always kind of ended up doing something completely different to what I thought that I was going to do. And yeah, that's that does uh, happen again. But it's it's uh, it's a lovely journey in Empires of the North. So the islands as well. Uh, it, it, I love the system where it's you, know, you, you can just be pillaging and getting it's it's a way of just getting extra resources really you're not entirely sure what you're going to get especially if there was a game with more players and a lot of them were going for shipping I imagine there's even more uncertainty because there's only you know two on display and then more and more people are going to have to go for the ones off the top of the deck if they're all going to the same place so it's it's a nice way of getting extra resources and points and some surprises but yeah, that, that combination of action stuff, because you get actions on the cards that you put out as well, but the, the surprises that you get, because it's always new islands that come out every round, and depending on how quickly you go for those sale actions, it, it, it's a great uh, form of interaction in the game, the the race for particular islands, especially if uh, if you both want something, because, uh, yeah, unless, you, unless your faction has particularly got a power that messes with the queue, it's going to be first come, first served, so... Uh, whether it's taking the clan action on the board to go sailing or you've got something in your cards that's going to let you do it some other way there can there can be a real uh, a, a real race for that stuff and there is you know, there there is um, negative interaction in the game I, I haven't seen any in the the clan cards themselves and that's what i like because the, in the was it the Ulaf clan that i think rach played in our original demo game and the you know, the, the text for it was all about uh, that they want to fight and all of this stuff. And we were thinking, well, I, I, I don't know about that. That's not the kind of players we're on. We're very peaceful players, not interested in fighting each other in games. Uh, but yeah, that is their kind of attitude. And it's kind of represented in the game more through how much they wanted to go uh, shipping and how many raise tokens they, they could easily, uh, they could more easily get access to those raise tokens and do more conquering. And it's uh, it's that kind of, the, the their gameplay elements came out of the you know, the description describes that more than okay we're going to be fighting each other uh, there is the raise action though where you can use those raise tokens to basically uh, tap somebody else's card so they won't be able to use it this round unless they've got cards that th there's plenty of cards that i've seen that let you unexhaust cards so you would be able to use them but then at the same time you've had to use one of those powers to unexhaust them it's not a massive thing you're not destroying anything at, at most you're uh, disabling it for a round and it's cost you a, a, a token that's not that plentiful that could have been used to go and conquer could have been saved for a point at the end of the game or used in some other way so it's there but so say that like, how can we know for sure we're not game designers but in our experience I, I don't feel like i've missed out on anything not uh, not attacking each other it, it is it is there i would imagine for if somebody has just happened to come up with a brilliant combo early in the game then you can kind of throw a spanner in the works while you're still getting yours together maybe that's that's probably the idea or oh, just that people like that sort of thing <laughs> that's uh, that's a good enough reason for it isn't it but uh we don't and it doesn't uh, it doesn't affect our enjoyment of the game at all that we're not doing it i think yeah the the, the a lot of the, the art style stuff and the yeah the, the the art style is lovely and cute the theming of it eh, i do that conquering stuff and all of that but yeah, for for the actual the actual card play and stuff, kind of abstracting that out a little bit. I I absolutely love this game, and uh, yeah, I still haven't done uh, a top ten of last year. Maybe we'll do that one day. But I, I feel like this would definitely be on it. This is uh, it's a bit late to be rumoured to get uh, you know, six months into twenty twenty, but uh, I would say definitely one of my uh, favourite releases of last year. I think it's absolutely fantastic. But don't take my word for it. <laughs> I've just been uh, talking it up for ages, and I've talked it all down. Don't believe me, I'm talking rubbish. But uh, if the playthrough is there. You make your own mind up rather than any of these ramblings. It's like 10 o'clock, I've been doing this all day. <laughs> Bye, everyone.